got this book a while back. It's a bunch of Lego ideas. And somewhere in here, there we go, there's a plan for building a six-legged walking robot, which is something that I've always wanted to do. And this pattern was unique in that it solved the turning issue. I was turning the robot by actually changing the length of stride, uh, like so, through moving the fulcrum. By moving it down, you get less motion of the foot. By moving it up, you get more motion. So if you can bias that from side to side, then you can make a robot that will turn without getting the legs out of sync. Because the legs get out of sync, it's just it's going to become unstable. It's going to fall over because while well, robots aren't good at dynamic stability, or bigger robots aren't anyway. Um, and to start with, I tried to build the robot that this guy had put together in the illustrations, obviously, in some kind of like Lego CAD design program, but it turned out to be kind of a POS design. It fell apart easily, and he had basically just a, one motor with a little lever that was supposed to change the the orientation of the plate that did the stride height and that really didn't work at all um, it could barely change it even when the robot was moving and the robot could barely move because he only had one weak little lego mindstorms motor powering the thing so thanks for the idea but ultimately flawed so i built what was originally a six-legged, but recently became an eight-legged walking robot. Um, take you briefly through how it works. It's got two levels. It's got this lower level, which has the stride compensator sort of deal to it. In here is a motor that goes one to five gearing to a worm gear to a 24 tooth gear. Not sure what that ratio is, but the worm gear sort of locks it in place, and that allows this entire side carriage, for want of a better word, to move up and down. As you can see, it's pretty loose. Um, that's just because there's a lot of play in the Lego axles because they're flexible plastic, so they don't break. Um, but the nice thing is that when the robot's walking, there's very little force exerted on this just a little bit of drag from the axles which are always moving in the same the same speed up versus down so it stays pretty much where you want it to um, it doesn't look like that when it's stationary but in practice it's actually decent um, got some weird feet on it to help it grab stuff and just because it looks cool and just because the black ones alone look like it was wearing stilettos and that was a little disturbing uh, as you can see, I've got a little rotation sensor in there for if I ever get around to writing a program for this thing so that it can know how to center its lower platform. Got eyes and pinchers that don't really do much. Um, as you can see, I got a motor there and a motor there that go 1 to 5 to the main gear wheels. And as I remember, the original design called for one of these little pulley wheels on each axle, but I found that those just fell off, so I doubled them up. So I got double pulley wheels, wheels here, hello cat, and ran out of pulley wheels, so I just got these little um, connector things on here that seem to do the job properly. And as you can see, I've got an absurd number of 24 tooth gears going down and connecting these because they have to all stay in synchronization. The two motors are geared together through these and they're solid axles going between the sides and in fact there's a little bit of tension in there because some of the axles were a little bit bent there is a little bit of stress on these gears when they're not moving but it keeps it in more or less perfect synchronization which ensures the robot's stable um, as you can see I put the brain of it, the RCX up top Makes it a little top heavy, but I couldn't really put it down low very well, so I've got a little extension to the wire from the steering motor. It resists all attempts to 
hold it down, but... So yeah, that's just the robot. I originally built it to six-legged and expanded it to eight-legged just to mess with it. Um, weird that way, I guess. Anyway. It runs on the default run motors program. I've got a remote so I can change the underside of it. Before I let it run, though, I'll show you how it changes the stride. If I can manage not to break it. So, legs are walking. And I'm gonna turn it. See, that goes up. And now this foot here is barely moving. And this foot is more or less flailing. And then I move it the other way. Now this one's going nuts, and that one's not doing loads. And surprisingly, over this long wheelbase, there's enough side play in the axles that it doesn't break anything when it turns. Well, that is some of the reason why I had to double up on the sides. Oh yes, it does three point turns. So yeah, that's the robot. Um, if you got a comment, go ahead and leave it down below. And uh, yeah, if you want to build one on your own, it's built from what I had in my parts bin, which is basically the full contents of a LEGO Mindstorms 1.5 kit and a 2.0 kit, pretty much the same. And also components from this Lego climbing monkey thing that never really quite worked properly, but that I was able to strip for parts. Um, so basically if you got three motors, a mess of gears, and more beams than you know what to do with, chances are you'll be able to assemble this or something like it or something better. Um, if you got ideas for improvements or a better version, feel free to post a video response or just post your own damn vid and I'll find it. So. Anyway, thank you for watching.